So, willkommen zur elften Folge hier von 60 Kilometer. In der letzten Folge habe ich ja geschätzt, es werden ungefähr 10, 12 Folgen, äh, 10, 12 Folgen, 10, 12 Kapitel. Und jetzt, wo ich das letzte Kapitel gesehen habe und das Ende, den Cliffhanger jetzt, gehe ich davon aus, dass das wohl das letzte Kapitel sein wird oder es vielleicht ein neues Kapitel gibt, aber mehr auch nicht. Und ich bin gespannt, was jetzt passiert. So, das war ja schon, schon eine krasse Erfahrung, dass wir jetzt zurückgekommen sind und da irgendeine Biomasse auf dem Ding war und der Junge mit den Kopfhörern hatte wohl die ganze Zeit recht, dass es irgendwelche Monster gibt, die hier uns äh, ans Leder wollen. Ich bin gespannt, wie es weitergeht. Ich speichere noch kurz, weil Speichern ist ja wichtig, habe ich gelernt. Und da würde ich sagen, tauchen wir wieder ins Spiel ein. Kapitel 8, die Konsequenzen, vermutlich die Konsequenzen von all unseren Taten. On May 22nd, exactly at 9 o'clock, a pink mist appeared everywhere on the planet. Everyone who inhaled it died almost immediately. The number of people on the planet decreased strongly, and even huge cities there were only and even in huge cities there were only hundreds of survivors. The mist was everywhere in closed spaces. Only those in a moving transport have survived. So it was the only place people can feel themselves secure. No one knew what happened on this ill-fated day. Many gave up and committed suicide by inhaling the poisonous air. Others died by mistake. Under the influence of the mist, water everywhere became similar to acid, uh, acid eating up every, everything fr fragile in its path. Okay, scheint wirklich das letzte Kapitel zu sein. Only corpses left of animals that were wandering, wandering the wilds. Fish were decomposing from the impact of the acidic water. Rainfalls just aggravated the situation. Because of them, all the plants and trees suffered. And they looked like the most sustainable thing after the cataclysm. Cataclysm. People were trying to understand what happened. The fall of the meteorite, chemical, weapon, chemical weapons, or even some impact from a large hadron collider. However, no one succeeded in the search of the truth about, about that day. Sergei Vitalievich, a middle-aged thin man with a constantly white hair and glasses, was late for work today. That day was supposed to become one of the most important ones in his career. But by a one hand by a hand of fate he was laid. He spent all night thinking about the upcoming day. He fell asleep only around morning, and when he woke up he realized he wouldn't make it to work on time. Sergei caught in a bus. There were not many people on it, because it was Sunday and rush hour was already over. He purchased a ticket and chose a seat in the back of the bus, close to an old man looking like a hobo. Well, maybe he was actually one. A man in glasses suspiciously examined him and nervously cast a look on his watch. It's too bad that the bus can't move faster, he thought. I'll get to the nearest underground station, then to the Salviolovsky railway station, and then on the electric train, quickly getting to work. He was trying to plan his way and count the time he was going to spend. Even if he get to the next train in time, He'll be late for at least one hour. However, he didn't have his own car anyway. 
A hobo looking old man reached in his giant bag and got a loaf of rye bread from there. He carefully untied the plastic bag and put it on the seat next to him. Sergei nodded, noticed it and moved a few inches away from him. The old man mumbled something unintelligible and got a tomato from his bag. It was fresh. They still cost a lot in May. A weird hobo. He looked at the red vegetable and stared to wipe it with his scarf. It started to wipe his and started to wipe it with a scarf. Even though the scarf looked even dirtier than the tomato itself, after that, he took a loaf of bread and dug his teeth in it. He took a bite of a tomato. Juice started to drip from his hands. Then he took another bite from his loaf. Not even trying to break off a piece to break off a piece of it which would make it easier for sure. Sergei watched the strange man with surprise. You don't meet people like this every day. Weird and special people, different from the others because of their habits. After eating up the tomato, the surprisingly old man took over another from his bag. T took another from his bag. He looked around caught a gaze of the man with untidy hair and said something unclear. Then he understood that he wasn't here by anyone and repeated in a loud voice. Wonderful tomatoes, they are cheap in a warehouse, a vegetable one. A vegetable warehouse. After hearing such a loud and sharp voice, some passengers in front rows looked back, but an old man ignored them and continued in joyous breakfast. Soon the bus stopped. There was a huge traffic jam ahead. Sergei nervously fidged on his, on his seat and checked the time again. It was around 10, it was around 10 in the morning. A strange old man, it seemed, wasn't hurrying anywhere. He slowly finished his tomato and put a half-eaten loaf back into his bag. He looked around and noticed a traffic jam. Moscow, Moscow, everyone here, always, everyone are always in a hurry. <coughs> a phone ringed. Oh, jetzt dürfen wir den spielen, okay. Ja, warum nicht beantworten, ne? Sergei took his phone and answered. Hello. You ain't gonna make it, do you? Not a chance. And there's a traffic jam. Fine, we'll start without you then. It's okay. We'll start to sort out the results and then, and then you get there. There's a lot of data to analyze. There's a lot to do. Yeah, I know. I hope it'll work out. Good luck there. Yeah, we'll need it. Okay, bye, see you. Sergei hanged off a call. Looked at the screen of a cell phone for a few moments and then put it back in his pocket. Work? The man with untidy hair looked at him thinking he should reply or stay quiet. Eventually, he didn't want to talk with a hobo that much, but still he decided to say a few words to him. Yes, work. Work, huh? What does he want? Is he just bored alone? The bus finally left the jam and started to move significantly faster. A great day, right? The hobo suddenly pushed Sergei with a hand, making him flinch. The bus suddenly stopped. A sound of breaking glass came from outside. A few people jumped from their seats and stared at what 
was happening behind the windows. The bus was surrounded with a red pink mist. Sergei stood up to see what's happening. He saw a few cars bumped into each other. A smoke was coming from their windows. One of the cars was burning. Blood stains were on the asphalt. Dear God! Everything was filled with sounds of crashing cars, pieces of broken glass scattered around the street. In few seconds everything turned into calm. To chaos. A man came out of one of the cars and ran to, to a burning car. Suddenly he grabbed his throat. The infected air has already infiltrated his lungs and was burning them from inside, the lifeless body among the broken glass on the asphalt. What's happening? People who walk down the sidewalk were falling down to the ground too. Some of them shouted something. Others tried to hold their breath after understanding the poisonous nature of the fog. But death reached them all. The passengers of the bus could only watch them. No one tried to help those who were outside. At least it was safe on the bus for now. Daddy, what is it? Is it the end of the world? No, calm down. Everything is going to be alright. Calm down. But the girl wouldn't listen to him and just cried louder. Everyone started to panic. Und ich speichere erstmal. Hey, nein, ich will nichts überschreiben. Ich will die nächste Seite. Suddenly a bird bumped into the window. It smashed and fell down. Shocked by the scene, everyone Everyone sitting nearby the windows moved to the center of the bus. At the same moment, they heard the sound of explosion. Serge tried to, to determine its location and saw a flame coming out from the high-rise building near the bus. It really looked like the end of the world. It really looked like the end of the world. People worried more and more. Everyone was shocked and no one could guess what's happening. The old man sitting next to Sergei was still on his head but still looked like he was scared. No signal. A rumble sounded outside. It was an unguided helicopter circling rapidly about the street. In a few moments it crashed against one of the high-rise buildings but luckily it flew a few blocks away from the place where the survivors were. Another explosion made the windows in the bus tremble. They were about to shatter dooming passengers to inevitable deaths. Inevitable whatever. At the same time the fire in a nearby car was getting stronger. Thick black smoke filled the space around it. Sergei quickly s thought that it's going to be explode and kill everybody. Move somewhere quickly, it's going to explode. The driver seemed to understand what's happening. He immediately pressed the gas pedal and steered the wheel to the right and he tried not to drive over dead bodies on the sidewalk. He even closed his eyes for a few seconds in order not to see the horrors outside. Faster! Sergei ran to the driver as if he was ready to drive the bus away himself. Another explosion. The burning car finally exploded. A fire spread to a nearby car. The driver steered the wheel again, trying to come around. Another car with a dead body inside. But he failed, and the bus headed directly into the glass window of a grocery store. A sound of squealing brakes and broken glass mixed with screams of the passengers. The bus rammed the store. The windshield miraculously survived the crash, even though it was not covered with many. It was now covered with many cracks. The driver turned off the engine 
and put his trembling hands on his knees. The conductress, who sat near him, was holding the seat handle. The rest of the passengers were frightened too. It was all like a nightmare or a Hollywood disaster film, but definitely not a regular weekend for sure. Daddy, I'm scared. What's going to happen to us? Hush, hush. Everything's going to be okay. Sergei sat on the closest seat. He was trembling. His heart pounded like crazy. Fear and adrenaline par paralyzed his legs. He thought of running away, but he knew he can't do this. It was a trap for the surviving passengers. Can somebody explain what's going on here? Nobody knows, don't you see? Let's try to calm down. Just look what's happening. This is like the end of the world. And you say calm down? Ich sag speichern. Shouting won't help us for sure. Wir erleben jetzt nochmal eine andere Story von anderen Leuten. Und wir erleben wieder das gleiche durch und durch. Das wäre natürlich krass. We're stuck in here anyway. We can't leave. We can only wait for help. Following by a sudden silence, just rarely broken by distant explosions, outside everybody in the bus stood silently. The man in the glasses looked at the shocked passengers. People were deep in their thoughts, trying to calm down. S Americans attacked. What Americans? The old man mumbled something and became silent. But what if he's right somehow? Looks like a chemical weapon. People went quiet. A few of them whispered about something. It seemed like the young girl was scared more than the others were. The girl turned her face to the window and surgery noticed that she was crying. Okay, und die erstmal beruhigen, würde ich sagen. The man with untidy hair came to her and slowly said, on the next seat. Calm down. The girl turned back and looked at his worrying face, then hid her sight in shame. She didn't want to look scared, desperate, weak and helpless, but the tears said it all. What's your name? Irina. Irina. Ira repeated the name and repeated the man in glasses, remembering the psychology advice about earning the trust by calling a person by name. Calm down, we are all scared, but we can't despair, we'll go through this together. I'm sure the help is on the way. The girl glanced at him and tried to smile. Don't even know what's happening, and you say you're sure about something. Surgery took a sword. He scratched his chin and continued, trying to look more confident. We come up with something. After making sure that the girl calmed a bit down, the man in glasses walked away from her and to the back of the bus. Sergei started to think that this fact has something to do with what was going on. Sadly, it was just a guess and he couldn't check if that was true. There must be many survivors. Are we alone here? There should be a lot of people in buildings. Sergei tried to inspect the street, looking through the dusty glass. No one. Only piles of corpses, broken cars and clouds of smoke everywhere. So all we can do is just wait? Seems so. There wasn't any other proposals. Waiting was hard, but it demanded immediate actions. There was an urge to escape as far as possible from this danger. Just like our ancestors were fleeing from predators if there was nothing to defend with. Nothing changes. Our instincts and behavior models preserved until today. But in this situation they were useless. 
survivors in the bus waited more than an hour until silhouettes of two men emerged from the fog outside. They walked amidst the smoldering cars, examining those that were still safe and carefully inspecting every corner of the street. These were two men with gas masks and pistols. They were talking with each other. Suddenly one of them spotted a movement in the bus. He pointed out to his companion. Everyone who was in the bus leaned to the window. A hope appeared in their faces. Who knows, maybe it's their rescue. Okay, wer sind die zwei? Wir haben ja gerade unseren, unseren Oleg haben wir eigentlich getötet im letzten Kapitel, weil der von den Schweinemenschen mitgeschleppt wurde. Heißt, es müssen jetzt die anderen beiden sein, deren Namen ich vergessen habe. Der, der Militärtyp mit den Gasmasken und der andere, der diese blutende Wunde am Kopf hatte. Bin ich jetzt gespannt. Erstmal speichern. Two men already came to the bus and looked at it with interest. Passengers were shouting something, but the sound was faint in the man and the man couldn't hear it. One of them carefully walked on a broken glass into the shop, examined the shelves, took a few glass bottles with water and came back to his partner. They stood there for another half minute, half of a minute discussing something and then they turned back quickly and walked away. A hope of the a hope on the faces of the passengers became dismay. End of chapter 8. Okay. Und es geht noch weiter. Naja, dann würde ich sagen, sehen wir uns zum nächsten Kapitel. Waren jetzt auch ziemlich genau 20 Minuten. Dann bis zum nächsten Kapitel. Ich hoffe, wir sehen uns wieder. Bis dahin. Tschüss.